guys, welcome to the channel. Good to see everybody today. We've got a little different treat for you. I'm gonna veer off the normal way of cooking that I've done for years, which everybody's familiar with, all the different variations. But I came across something new about three, four years ago when I started my YouTube channel. I have filmed, you guys can look back and see this. I did a video calling sous vide a fish. I forget the fish I was even sous vide -ing. And what I was using, well, it was Jack's. I was over my buddy Jack's place. And I was using this little jewel called, it's a sous vide. This one is uh, made by Chef Steps, manufactured by Breville. This is an immersion heater. It's 1100 watts. I'm bringing it a little closer so you guys get an idea of what this thing is. Doesn't weigh more than about a pound and a half and it's about maybe 12, 14 inches tall. This thing has been nothing less than a game changer for me. Almost primarily I'll cook with sous vide and then I'll finish it with a char whether on the barbecue or on the uh, gas top. But this has revolutionized the way I do cooking for a couple of reasons. One, the outcome is an expected outcome. I know going in, if I want medium rare, if it's a steak we're talking about, from one end, one tip to the other tip will be 100% medium rare. No well done, like when you, if you grill or barbecue, you know, you know what it's like. No matter how much you cook it, unless you make it rare, rare, rare. If you cook it like normal, medium rare, you're going to have well done at the ends and then it'll get hot pink in the center. Not with sous vide, not at all. This is controlled cooking. And the beauty of this is you can't overcook your foods. And I'm going to explain this a little later in the video as we do this. But let me tell you a little bit about the breakdown. The bottom of the, the sous vide, an immersion heater, it's magnetic. So it'll stay. This is an aluminum pot I'm using today. It, it, it'll stay freestanding. But generally in my metal pots, if I'm not using a plastic big bath to do bigger pieces of meat, this uh, has a clip on the back so you can clip it on the toilet pots, which is really nice. But in the metal pots, it just stays in place. It's just fabulous. You just got to get it up to about here. You can, you, can, oh, you can go over the outlet here. Won't hurt. This is where it recirculates the water. The bottom unscrews, and that's for maintenance too. There's a little prop. I'm sure you guys can see that orange prop. With a tweezer pliers, you can pull it out, clean it up because there's hardness in everybody's water. So the only maintenance I've had to do, and I've had to do it several times over the years, whether I'm in Florida or Tennessee, the tap water is horrendous. Loaded with minerals, very hard water, a lot of calcium deposits. So they recommend, and this is all on the website, to put this in a 50-50 mixture of distilled vinegar and water. Sometimes I make it a little stronger, but I don't waste a bunch of it in a big pot. You could take a small little coffee pot. As long as this thing can be submerged, get it in there and it'll recircle. When it hits 140 degrees, at that point, according to the website, it says that it's fully disinfected and uh, cleaned out. Usually I let it run a lot longer. I just, I, and I do it almost methodically once every couple, three weeks. But that's the only maintenance I've had with this and it's been excellent. Sometimes you'll, the motor was bogging down. I knew right away it would stop. I started again. It was just loaded up with gunk. It's just normal maintenance. Nothing more, nothing less. But the beauty of this is controlled cooking. And sous vide is a French term, it means under vacuum. All that means is, let me give you an example. This is what we're gonna be cooking today. There's two turkey tenderloins in here. We're gonna cook one of them for now. And this one happens to be seasoned. Uh, I normally season them. Now this isn't a, uh, a natural turkey. No hormones or anything were added to it. 
but and this is from Jenny on oh, my wife picked this up for me this package I don't know if it's sous vide rated where I can put it in you know 140 150 degree water so we're going to be cutting it out and then I've got behind me a little food saver, a little vacuum. This thing is a gem. Every homeowner needs to have one. This is the basic entry model. This is my first one. I have three of them. And this one only cost me 79 at the time. You don't need an expensive one, no bells and whistles. If you know how to use it, it does amazing things for you. Now what I did, let me explain what I have here. You can buy these in bulk, and if you do get a vacuum sealer, I'm going a little off subject, but this is really part of sous vide. A vacuum sealer is gonna be your best friend. You can buy pre-made sous vide bags that are, and I have boxes of them as well, or you can custom make your own. These are sous vide thermal uh, plastic rolls. Anyway, you can make it any length you want. And what I do, if you can see this, I put a double, there you go. I put a double seal because while it's under that water, no matter what I'm cooking with sous vide, I want nothing to leach into that. There's no BPAs, no nasty chemicals that are gonna leach out of these um, sous vide rated plastic bags. They're made for cooking. So getting back before what I said about the French under vacuum, this is the vacuum. Once the meat's in there, it'll look again like this, sealed up entirely. This forces whatever marinade you have, while it's sucking out the oxygen, it is pulling in the liquid, forcing it in a vacuum, and everything goes toward the center. On a vacuum, it closes up because all the air is being eliminated. So all your external seasonings and all that goodness, your basting, your whatever you're cooking, will be forcefully marinating, forced to enter that. So just understand that it really works. And in about two hours, in all honesty, you marinated even a piece of steak that's very dense. It's good to leave it overnight. And now, this has been sitting out for about two and a half, three hours. Room temperature is the best way, even if you cook it on the stove. Don't go cold from the refrigerator onto a pot pan. Don't do that. You get the best results when you uh, get room temperature. So, this is a handy thing to get. These rolls are not expensive at all. You buy a four pack on Amazon. They'll be in my Amazon store and you can see this. So I'm gonna premature cut this. I've already sealed it. I'm gonna lock it in here again, and just for purposes, because I know how much I'm gonna need. I don't need a lot, and it's always good to have a little lip, and I'll show you why in this, in this instance. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this, we're gonna fold back maybe an inch and a half, so like a nice lip. There's a rough side. I usually put that on the bottom and then a light side. But they're all the same material. And what I'm going to do is once I cut this out, I'm going to take one of them, drop them in here. I don't want to wet this lip because when I flip it over, otherwise I've, I've got to get paper towels and dry it off. Makes for a good surface for this thing to melt it and uh, seal it. So let's open, let's open this, uh, Turkey. There we go. I don't want to cut up the tenderloin. All right, very good. Let me see what we got here. We'll pull one of these tenderloins out. push it out. There you go. Let's put this here. All right, we've got a nice tenderloin. It's already seasoned, so I'm not really going to add anything else into it. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to pop it in here. Okay. And you can still 
Like I might, I'll go ahead and add some oil to it. Olive oil is my best friend. Great seasoning. I usually lather it up with olive oil. It's a good, a good Italian extra virgin. It's a very good fat. Now we're gonna seal it up. You can put rosemary in there. So many things you can put in here to further enhance the marination. And inside this, there's a little, it's removable, a little catch with a seal around it so that you try to fold the lip into there so that anything that's sucked out will be uh, trapped. So we're gonna put it on a vac seal, it'll, it'll come loud. You'll hear it run and then you'll hear it like it step up, it's going into second stage. There you go, second stage. It's a little louder than some of the other ones, but it does the same thing. There you go, it, it, it reaches a certain uh, 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 pressure rating on here. And it's sealing it, there we go, pull it out. It's sealed, let me put a double seal on this. And that's quiet, the seal. And this will be all ready to go now. It's so easy, and this will revolutionize the way you cook, I promise. Okay, we've got a double seal. This is vacuum sealed just right. So the next step we've got to do is, we fill the pot up with just regular tap water, nothing fancy. You can use clothespins, which is, I bought a bag from Walmart, it's, it, because they constantly disappear with the kids and everything. Use this, and you, this long tag end is beautiful. The, pur the purpose of this is to keep your meat, or whatever, fish or vegetable, whatever it is you're cooking, submerged, and you have a tag piece on the top. Sometimes, there's, it happens that the food will float. It will. If it does, like you can try it with an open bag too. You don't have to vacuum seal either. You could leave it open and once you push it in the water, the water will do the same effect to the meat or whatever it is that you're sous vide and will force all the air out and the open top will be outside. You'll hang it over, clip it. If it wants to float, throw a couple of spoons in there or knives won't hurt the stainless steel and it'll give you some weight. So we're gonna we're gonna put this in the water. Just gonna stand it up. And let me show you. Okay, it lights up white. It'll be red for a while while it's heating and then it turns green when it hits you at desired temperature. I'm gonna show you on my phone. There's an app right here. Jewel and you pick different, let me go back to this here, beef, seafood, poultry, pork, lamb, game, vegetables, desserts, and other. It's constantly, constantly evolving with chef steps. This is a fantastic app to get if you get this sous vide. There's many different manufacturers, Anova. They don't float my boat at all. This is, far as I, I can tell, has the highest wattage of any sous vide cooker on the market. And it's compact and it, it's absolute the bomb. All right, we're gonna go back to that. Let's get to the password, here we go. We're gonna hit poultry because turkey falls into that. These are breast tenderloins. The white meat and the dark meat cook at different temperatures. And we'll talk about that when it's cooking here. We're gonna pick we're gonna pick white meat here, which is the breast. And they call it the ultimate chicken breast, because it is. Uh, let's see, uh, hold on just a second. Let me go back and see if there was turkey here. Yeah, turkey breast, I hit, that. I hit the chicken by mistake. All right, we're gonna set the temperature. They've got ratings here. You can do 131 degrees, and they'll give you a doneness of what it is. You could do eight, eight, at eight hours, 18, 24. For a small thing like this, I'm only gonna go two to three hours. 
it's not a big piece of meat that has to really be cooked a lot. So we'll just accept one. It doesn't really make a difference. 131 degrees. It says, is your food fresh or frozen? It's fresh. Do you want to make the world's most tender turkey breast tenderloins? Of course. So we're going to start the jewel and that's all you got to do. Start. Bluetooth. Now I'm going to show you what happened. Well, first look at the screen. This is what comes up. It gives you the existing temperature of the water right now. So the tepid water is 77 degrees just now. I chose eight hour cook time. I'm going to pull it out in two to three hours. And then here it says, wait to add your food until the water is heated. So that's what we're going to do. When the water is heated, we're going to drop it in. Now, let me show you how this works. That's the power. It sucks from the bottom all the way up to here, but it's, it's submerged. Whether you're over that or not doesn't make a difference. So while this is heating, I want to talk a little bit about the principle of sous vide and why we do it. Sous vide meaning total vacuum from the French term. You are encapsulating whatever it is you're cooking with the air forced out because it will be subjected to under the water. If I were to cut this seal off and have an open bag, push it down, it would do the same thing to it. Okay, the exact same thing. With the total vacuum, when it cooks, it is first getting like a bath. When you take a bath, all your water, it gets cold and you gotta add hot water, not with the sous vide. There's no uh, heat uh, temperature fluctuation. I mean, literally, it's within a tenth of a degree. Goes down, the thing just signals and heats up internally, but it is constantly circulating. Now, what I said before, you can't overcook. You can't. You can ruin things if you really sous vide for ex real extended periods of time. You'll work against the whole principle. Then you'll be out there in the solar system by yourself. So we're going to stay here on planet Earth and we're going to do it safe and the easy way and the proven ways because we don't have to reinvent the wheel. When it cooks, imagine this is underwater. Every bit of the water, 360 degrees, is the same temperature at all times. It doesn't go from like a little flame and if you put it on the stove, you know, if you want to boil some soup, Say you start off as a simmer. If the simmer is left alone for an extended period of time, that water is going to be boiling. You're going to be overcooking that. If it's macaroni, forget it. I like it al dente. So if it stays in the water, it's going to continue to cook and cook and cook. Not with the sous vide. This is the magic of sous vide. Controlled temperature equates to controlled cooking. I had an experiment with this. I couldn't believe it. It was a whole new concept to me. It's been around a while. I'm certainly not introducing something that I'm sure many of you guys and girls do this. This is a fantastic company to hook up with Chef Steps. They're out of Seattle. It's a big test kitchen. There are all a bunch of guys and, and women there. And it's under the name of Chef Steps. And they're owned by Breville, the manufacturer with all their products. It's a fantastic product. See, it beeps orangey red, well, it flashes, and then it'll turn green when desired temperature. When it does, your phone will notify you. So by having control cooking, I, if say this was a four hour cook time, this thing can sit in the water even for two and three hours longer. Guess what? It'll still be at that exact temperature. It will not be overcooked. For example, let's put turkey tenderloin down. We're going to do another video. I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to introduce you to the second ribeye. It's a look-alike, tastes almost like it. And let me tell you, everybody isn't going to go out and spend 18 bucks a pound at the store and buy these bone-in or boneless ribeyes. Take a 
cheap and inexpensive cut of meat near the ribs called the chuck. It's now up to $9 a pound. I'm telling you, I've done through up to three and three quarter pound uh, chuck uh, roast. It, it could be a roast. You have the ability with this to create a pot roast, or if you cook it at a lesser time, at a lesser temperature, the recipe at the right degrees, and you follow their recipe, you got yourself a ribeye lookalike. I have taken chuck steak, and after marinating it and cooking it in this for 24 to 48 hours, I know everybody's saying, you gotta be kidding me, it's gonna be like a piece of leather. Not at all. The chuck steak was cooked from one end to the other end. I like medium rare. It was perfect medium rare throughout the whole thing. My wife couldn't believe it. She's not a real big fan of chuck steak. We'll use it in pot roast, which it's most famous for. Not anymore. If you want, if you have the Thule and you, man, I, I, I want a nice steak, but I don't want to pay 18 bucks a pound for a ribeye. I get it. And then I gotta wait for it to go on sale. Forget that. Get yourself a chuck steak. Get a moderately smaller piece. It will amaze you. We're gonna do a video on that, and I think you guys are really gonna like that. So this is heating up. Let's check what temperature it is. So we go on our phone. We, well, I already pulled up the Jewel app. It says it's 80 degrees. Let's take a look here. I'm gonna touch that, push it back. That refreshes it. See, it's preheating to 131. It, there's the current temperature, 111 degrees. What have we been talking, five minutes? It went up, what, 35 degrees already? 34 degrees, 112 degrees. So at 131, it's going, you're gonna hear a beep. It's gonna signal me time to put the, the meat in. I don't have a problem with that at all. I don't have a problem with that. And we're gonna resume back later in another two to four hours. I'm probably gonna let it go about three hours. I'm gonna take it out and it's gonna be one unctuous, luscious, scrumdiliocious piece of turkey breast. I will make your mouth water because mine's watering right now. I love turkey and I used to hate and I still hate cooking a whole turkey. I don't, I very rarely do that anymore because to be honest with you, it's hit or miss. You're gonna have, it's an accepted fact, the white meat's gonna be a little overcooked if you want, if you're a dark meat person. I'm a dark meat guy. Now, I eat white meat just like I eat the dark meat, but I cook it better. Now, I do it different at Thanksgiving. When I get a full turkey, I cut it up. I put, if I'm gonna do it in the oven, it's pieces. If, and I cook them separately. I'll cook the uh, dark meat at, at uh, 100, I think it's 155, 158, it's a higher temperature. And the white, uh, the breast, which can get dried out really quick, you cook it at a lower temperature and you get the best of both worlds. So I might cook the white meat first, my second stove, I'll cook the other one and bam, you've got yourself a 100% well cooked. We did this years ago with my dad and he, he introduced me to that. He said, I'm not cooking a whole turkey anymore. He was a fantastic cook. He introduced me to part, part and parcel. Break it all up. My goodness, everything was delicious. If you eat fresh turkey, last year, on my, uh, my first turkey I killed was last year, 22, hunting. I killed a really big bird. I got 13 pounds of meat out of it. Each breast was roughly about this size and about that thick. They weighed about four, four and a half pounds a piece, the breast. The legs were like ridiculous, dinosaur legs. I didn't realize the turkey was so big. I brined it. I use a salt mixture when I brine and we'll go over brining in another video how I do that. And there's different types of brining out there. But for this purpose, the reason I brine my meats, any kind of meat I have, I want the blood pulled out of the meat and as much impurities as I can. I usually do it two or three times over a period of three days, refrigerated, take it out, tap water, fully rinse it out and rinse, wash everything out, all new salt, 
just regular iodized salt and water and put it in there. So after I did that to it, I did the breast and I experimented. First time I had to cook wild meat and that is the most organic you can get. I did it with the sous vide just like this. Let me tell you, one of my, my middle girl's house, she has four little, <laughs> four little uh, roughnecks over there, three boys and a girl. And these kids, little kids, under 12 years old, all went for seconds on the breast, fork tender, 130, 132 degrees. And when we take this out, what we're gonna do, and I did it with that breast, and it's a usual procedure when you cook out of sous vide, take it out. I'll have a nice grill pan, it'll be searing hot, and we're going to sear this to get a nice brown, cap on it on both sides. We're gonna let it cool down. Before we do that, put it on there, do it for a minute on each side to brown it, seal in the flavors, and then bon appetit, I'm ready to dig in. Well, the jewel just signaled me. It'll turn red. It says, add your food and tap here to start your timer. It already heated to 131 degrees. So, here's another trick. When you put this in, don't just drop it in. Slowly lower it into the water and then get it set up and then you put, you put as many of these clips as you need. So we're gonna slowly put it in and in this kind of a pot, you know, I'm pushing it down a little bit with the plastic. I'm gonna put one clothespin, another one. I'm gonna keep it as deep as I can on there. And that's held in nice. I'm going to start my timer. Start. Let's get Bluetooth going here. Okay. Start. There we go. It is ready to go. I could stop the jewel anytime and resume. I'm going to leave it alone. And we're going to catch up in about another... Uh, three hours or four hours. We're gonna pull this little jewel out of here, no pun intended, and we're going to do a taste test. Well guys, moment of truth has come. I put a little tinfoil cover on top of this to prevent evaporation. I also have a rubber top that's specially made for this, but you can cover it with most anything. This way you keep your water level the same. We went two hours and 15 minutes. This is what she looks like. Let's open this package. And this, there we go. Slide her out. And I'm warming up a pan right now on the stove and we're gonna uh, sear this but I'm gonna taste a piece because I can't wait oh wow can you can you see that can you see how succulent that is oh my goodness mm -hmm. now this tastes as tender as filet mignon no exaggeration so we're gonna go, let's go to the stove right now and we'll uh, give it a nice brown sear on both sides and uh, see how that affects the taste. Okay, we've got the uh, pan heated up. I'm gonna let it get a little hotter. Put a little bit of a drizzle of olive oil in here. Let me see, I can tell you if it's ready. Oh yeah.
This just locks in the flavor. is going to taste really good okay we got it is that not beautiful sight oh yeah and I can cut this with a fork I'm going to show you oh yeah look at that is that not beautiful check this out Look how juicy this is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Would you guys like a slice? I'll be glad to cut it up for you. So this served is just cut up in slices like that this is absolutely delicious just look at this oh my gosh beautiful beautiful pink just a beautiful color my goodness just it's unbelievable Look at that color. Isn't that beautiful? Oh yeah. Well, I hope I'm wetting your palate that you want to try one of these little jewels here. These sous vide cooking totally has changed the whole dynamic for me for cooking. This takes a, a simple piece of meat and white meat no less. It's statistically and historically dry and undesirable. <clears throat> Very few times have I had it where it was as juicy and succulent and moist like dark meat is. And let me tell you, it is spot on. Flavored already, so I didn't really have to season it that much, but olive oil always is a beautiful coating and just a nice taste to get infused in the meat. I hope you guys enjoyed this. <clears throat> this is the first of many more to come. Uh, we're going uh, full steam ahead. I'm excited. We have so many new dishes we're going to be trying out. And uh, we're going to be going in the world of sous vide as one of our avenues. We're going to talk about vacuum sealing properly uh, at my other home when we do videos there. We'll talk about chamber sealing, vacuum sealers. And it's just changes the whole dynamic of <clears throat> taking a normal dish, a midweek dish, and in two hours, bam, you could do this. And Bluetooth, you could set it. It's unbelievable. You could set it automatically. So it really is a cool thing. You could start your jewel when you want. You can shut it off. You can be at work, finishing up your day at three o'clock, five o'clock. Your dish is done. Make a nice side and you really impress your other half. And your kids will eat this, trust me. My grandkids went ballistic over my turkey breast, and that's what this is. So guys, I appreciate you hanging in with, with me on this. This has been so much fun to do. I'm back, I'm glad to be back, full swing. I'm just excited, and I'm um, going full steam ahead. So if you like it, please hit the subscribe button, smash it, uh, give me a like, give me a thumbs up. You know how the algorithm works. <clears throat> I don't want to bore you with the details, but I need your help. You guys have been super, super with me for the last two years hung in. I appreciate it. If you're a new subscriber, thank you. Check out all our 
log of videos. We got over 100 videos already posted on all kinds of seafood and some fishing. I hope you enjoy it, and it's going to get even more flavorful as the days proceed. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.